In this video, you're going to learn how to use a de on vocals, and it's really quite simple. I want to start this with a quick demonstration. There's a bit of EQ on this vocal, but it's starting to get a bit too sibilant, so now I'm just gonna use the stock logic compressor to try and tame that sibilance. Sky may fall, hearts may break. Sky may fall, hearts may break. Sky may fall, hearts may break. And that's it. DSing is a really important tool and it can prevent sibilance, which is a really big issue in a lot of vocals, but it's simple, it's easy to use, and it shouldn't take that long. But there are still some guidelines you need to know if you want to avoid ruining your vocal completely. So keep watching if you want a step-by-step -step breakdown of using a DSer like a pro, so you can make your vocals and mixes radio ready. From dust to dust, the Rob Mays is here from Musician on a Mission, and today you're gonna to learn about DSing. As you just saw, it doesn't take long, but there are still some important guidelines because if you get DSing wrong, the vocalist is gonna sound like they've got a lisp because you're getting rid of the S's too much. I find myself using a DSer in probably 80% or so of mixes, especially again when you're boosting those upper mids, and I find it's often the only way to boost the upper mids without adding too much sibilance is by using a DSer. Now, any DSer will work. You just saw me use the Logic one. I also have the Fab Filter one, which I prefer, honestly, but they're pretty much the same. And now I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step breakdown of applying DSing. So you want to start by looping a section of the song that has lots of sibilance. So let's start by just removing this de -esser. So we're starting from scratch and I'm going to loop a section of the song with a few S's. So sibilance is just on those S or T sounds quite often we get it too. And this is a great example of this little section here. The sky may fall, hearts may break. So you can hear there on the heart or the sky may fall. The sky may fall, hearts may break. So you just wanna find a section like that where you notice that it's an issue and loop it. That's all we need, just a few words, even if it's just one word just to find it. The next step is to load up your de -esser. And then we're gonna solo the detector. And different de have a different way of working. With this Logic one, we have two sections. We have the detector and then we have the suppressor. So this is saying what's gonna trigger it because this is just a form of compression. So we're telling it what frequency to monitor and we're saying if we set it to 7,000 hertz, we're basically saying when 7,000 hertz gets a bit too loud, we want to clamp down according to the suppressor. So the easiest thing to do is just to link these. You can have it slightly different, but I tend to just do them the same. What we want to do first is find the frequency range that's actually guilty for that sibilant. So we do that by going to monitor or detect mode, something like that, listen mode, sometimes it's cool. And we're just going to sweep around until we find where it's kind of sounds aggressive. And we're also going to keep an eye on this activity light because when that lights up, it means that the DS is actually doing something. So if, for example, we have the DS all the way down here, maybe the activity light won't actually light up because there's not much sibilance going on. Whereas up here, it's probably going to start lighting up. So you can see there on sky and hearts, that little light comes up. Let's see if we can listen to a range that sounds a bit more harsh. Sky may fall, hearts may break. The sky may fall, hearts may break. The sky may fall, hearts may break. The sky may fall. So it sounds worse around there. That's pretty good. The next step is to adjust the sensitivity so that we're only seeing the de reacts to those S, those T sibilant sounds. If the sensitivity is too high, it's gonna start compressing everything. The sky may fall, hearts may break. The sky may fall, hearts may break. So there it's lighting up on full as well. We don't really need that. So instead, let's just tweak it until it's only lighting up on sky and hearts. The sky Perfect. So then we want to turn it off monitor mode and we just want to change this to the same frequency, so 8K. And now we're going to adjust the strength. So we're going to start with a really low strength. We're going to bring this up until the vocalist starts to sound like they've got a bit of a lisp. When that happens, we know we're suppressing those S sounds a bit too much. 
once we get to that point we're going to back it off a bit and then we're going to check it in the mix as well because quite often in solo the vocalist sounds like they've got a lisp but in the context of the track it actually sounds kind of normal so we'll start doing it in solo just so you can really hear this but honestly i recommend you avoid that solo button and just do this in the context of the mix from the start so let's give this a go the sky may fall hearts may break 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 so you can kind of hear there where it starts to sound like a lisp this gets difficult because once you start paying attention to it it becomes more of a problem than it is in reality it probably sounds completely fine but when you really focus on the sound of those s elements it starts to sound like they have a lisp so then really we want to just stop listening for a few seconds to kind of recalibrate our ears then we're going to take it out of solo and now we're just going to check this in the mix and do a similar thing again the sky may fall hearts may break 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 So around there, we're kind of in the right area. The next step now is to just bypass this a few times. Check we're actually making an improvement that it's treating those S sounds enough without sounding uh, over the top. So we're just gonna flick back and forth. The sky may fall, hearts may break. 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 The sky may fall. Hearts may break, the sky may fall, hearts may break, the sky may fall, hearts may break. So that sounds pretty good to me. It's not massively sibilant, this vocal. It's only really an issue because I've boosted the upper mids a bit with this equalizer here. You can see here I've got a higher boost at 12k, so it's pretty high um, however I'm cutting quite a lot in the lower mids which is bringing out those upper mid frequencies more and that's really the only issue quite often what you find is certain vocalists are more sibilant than others or it's the mic that was used or the way it was recorded um, in this case it's not too bad so we don't need too much strength just to treat that a little bit and remove some of that harshness but that's it. It's really not a difficult tool to use. You don't need to understand too much what's going on behind the scenes. In essence, it's only compressing a frequency range rather than compressing the whole track. It's just a form of multiband compression, but that doesn't really matter. You just need to dial in those settings and that same step-by-step -step process is gonna to apply to any plugin. Sometimes they have different names. So for example, the Fab Filter plugin has a slightly different way of working. Instead of having a separate detector and suppressor, um, we've just got the range down here, audition instead of on logic, it's called uh, monitor. So pretty much the same, just a slightly different way of working. Take that process and apply it to anything. And just as a quick added tip now, you can also use DSs for other stuff besides sibilance. So string noise on a guitar, that's a really good case if you have an acoustic guitar recording, something like that, where the string noise is really bugging you. Just find where that is with the de and then do the same thing, same process to reduce it. You can also do it with bow noise on violin and different bowed instruments. So not just sibilance, but of course, that's the main use case. So there you go. That's how you use a de on vocals. Now, of course, this is just one small part of mixing vocals. And on top of de you need to understand EQ compression, automation, all these various things if you want your vocals to sound professional. And that's why I put together a free vocal mixing cheat sheet. Download it, use it, reference it when you're mixing, and that's gonna help you to get the vocals right every single time. There's a link in the bio or there's a link on screen now. Once you've grabbed that, I want to hear from you. How often do you find yourself using a de -er? Do you use a de -er in the majority of mixes? Do you use them every now and then when they're a problem? I'm interested to know how often you find yourself using a de -er. So leave a comment below. I can't wait to hear from you and I'll see you same time, same place next week. And as ever, create regardless. Thank you.